let the moms out. <laughs> I tried to like bark before you finished talking, so there was no delay. So I don't think it worked. Oh, um, wow. This is how you could tell. Um, that I, so I was actually, the moment you started barking, I realized that I should have told you before. Like, hey, whenever I say, who let the dogs out, automatically starts, you know, like if you see my lips, but then I'm like, well, there's no point because it's delayed. That's the whole thing. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Or like maybe as soon as I start, like we need to time it. Halfway through, you start. So that it happens at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's try. Go. Oh yeah, and then we'll just all run to cut this. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Welcome to another episode of Who Let the Moms Out? <laughs> oh my god, it was really confusing. <laughs> I bet, but this is much better timing for the song. Okay, we are getting better, y'all. We are working on it. Um, I'm not sure why my f- turn on <laughs> Do Not Disturb. Siri's talking to you. She wants to be part oh, of no. the episode. This is so fun. So fun. Hi. So today we are going to be talking about embracing the different parenting roles. My window has gone. I'm so sorry. Hold on. I don't know what's going on. Like, I lost you. Okay, here we are. <laughs> oh, look, and now do not disturb. Is there, uh, something is happening. There is a lot happening. There's a lot happening. Today's episode is going to be about embracing the different... <laughs> areas of you know seasons of parenting but it really should be about the chaos that is happening outside my house (laughs) the chaos that is life yeah so if if these of you who don't know marie is moving very soon (laughs) so there's a lot happening over there (laughs) and there's There's also construction is happening (laughs) yeah because the move is manageable but the construction the poor birds are like flying as i see this machinery and i'm just like ah Nobody tell me that was yeah. going to be as much So if you're hearing this in the background, welcome to life. We could have opted to not record, but we didn't want to leave you sad for many more weeks without hearing all the nonsense that goes on in the lives of just two regular moms. <laughs> two regular moms trying to make it, but trying. Let's just, just call it out, trying. <laughs> okay, so speaking about trying, let's talk about how... Parenting is so humbling because I feel like, I don't know, I I hope it's very common that we go through life, through parenting life, right? Thinking, oh, I'm going to be this type of parent or I'm going to do this this way. And only to have like a couple months later be like, oh, no, 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 I, I've changed my mind no more, you know? And yeah. and it's so crazy because for those of us that have two, can I tell you how it, 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 some things that I'm like, oh. Wow. It doesn't even bother you anymore. It's like you just no. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. It's like, you you yeah. do you. You do, you do you, friend. So, like in that sense, I I see how some people have like ten kids and stuff. By the tenth, yeah, one, exactly. It's just like... But I think it is though. I think it is like you get. I think the first kid is always the one that you learn all of this, right? It's the one that like will teach you the most. And then when the second second comes, like that fear. Is obviously you still have some fears, but like there's other things that you just let go because it's like, yeah, you know, it is not worth you getting annoyed because you already tried and it's it was it's just yeah, it was not worth the battle. It's it's funny because when uh like my my toddler is really 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 in love with my baby, like it's the most beautiful thing on earth. But as a parent, it's also like you know, like. how do you advocate and who are you advocating for and how do you do this? Because it's so much of it, but how do you do it? You know, I don't want to like put her off from like loving her sister, but then sometimes it's like, please, like, you know, and I've had moments where I've like, just like stop or whatever, or I've explained it. So, you know, I've done the whole rainbow of that. This is not what that's about. The other day I saw my tiny four month old baby, just like literally like my, my toddler came upon her like really, really close, no face, like no no space whatsoever. And Atlas just went like, ah, grabbed her hair, pushed her off. And then Alaska would like moving and she just like yanked out hair and like took out like a good chunk of hair. And so I just watched all this. And this happened really fast. It's not like, you know, obviously it didn't take very long. And I'm just sitting here going like, 
So I, I don't need to figure it out. They will. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's, they will, yeah. You know, and, and it's crazy because I feel like the first one would have had moments like that where she would have also figured it out too had I given her three more minutes, you know? <laughs> but because I was a first-time parent or like when I see my second baby try to roll over and stuff like that, like she's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. And, you know, she's like literally rolling all over the place every which way since like a month and a half ago. My first one was like nine months and refusing to crawl. And I was like, but it was probably because every time she went like, you know, I went and rescued her. <laughs> but it is, we do that, don't we? We like get so attached and then we always afraid. I'm always like, you're always counting the, the, the timelines according to everyone's development windows. And then your kid's not doing this and you just... <laughs> And the difference is, I think, first, is like, I'm sorry, but Atlas and Alaska are completely different child, like yeah. children. Like, I don't think Alaska had this energy that yeah. Atlas has. Exactly. So I, I still think, like, even if you weren't, you know, like, who attended to every need, which it's fine, um, I think she will still, like, you know, not want to move as much because now she has the energy, though. She gets you running. <laughs> She's going to get you running very soon. And, and, oh, <laughs> Oh my god I am so afraid for my life um you know it's crazy because I feel like you know it's also what's going on in your life you know like I feel like we change because of our kids because of the personalities but also because of our seasons like I feel like when we allow ourselves a space to grow within within parenting right it's sort of like there are seasons for example where I've been a lot more strict with let's say meal time in this season of life where we're also moving, we want to hang out with our friends, you know, we ha we're be be traveling extra for wh whatever it is, right? Like, we're just going to be really relaxed with food for the next few weeks, you know? Like, we're just going to eat whatever we want, you know? It's fine. Nobody's going to die, you know what I mean? Obviously, not whatever we want, but, you know, <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go and buy, you know, crap food and just feed you candy, but we're not going to sit here yeah, and just, yeah, bite just at every think meal. Think about it, and, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and create a menu every day. Like, you know, I'm, it's okay. You want to have one meal and the rest is yogurt. Fine. It's fine. But we will, we will do better at some point, you know? We'll count our victories um, in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like sometimes I'm like, cause you see things online and you're like permissive parenting and neglectful parenting and this parenting. And I'm just like, how about, you know, choose what works for you in the moment as well. Parenting. Like there are some seasons where, where life merits you getting really invested and fighting that battle and having those long conversations and fighting about the details and, and, and structuring things and setting up some routines. And then there are moments where you just got to survive. Like when you first get another baby, yeah. Whew, yeah. yeah. You know, the amount and of also, adjusting we're going through. <laughs> exactly. Like you have to, and also there's always an adjustment period, like whatever you are doing in life, like, if you just started like a new school, if you've moved or even you have a new baby, um, there's so many things you've just been sick for, you know, the past year, uh, you know, all of this thing, <laughs> toddler, it's just nonstop, like, and, or a toddler or a baby or whatever. And it's just, yeah. So like, I think we fail to say this because like whenever you're in a, this season where you're, not ready to do a lot of things you know like having a routine or just you know having less screen time you're just constantly feeling guilty and instead of feeling guilty we should just be accepting and talking more about this because it happens to everyone and everyone just feels guilty doesn't talk about it because it's like oh shameful oh I'm doing this and I shouldn't be doing this or something right. but who said who who said right. this doesn't happen to everyone? Like, this happens to everyone. We all go for these seasons. And somehow right. it's, like, taboo. Nobody talks about It's secretive and shameful. And it's, it, there's a lot of things in motherhood like that. And especially as well the parenting styles. Because it's, like, you know, there's the gentle parenting. And there's the, the, the crunchy, scrunchy, smunchy. And the almond and the butter mum and the... Dude, the it's like high pet. school. It's like high school all over again. And it's really, it's yeah, really, it's so, the popular it's, so toxic group. Because it's really toxic because we go back to putting ourselves in these little boxes all over again. And at the end, it's us doing it to us, really. Um, because, you know, who's forcing us to join these groups in high school? That's like you're forcing to people, but as an adult, who's really forcing you? So we do it to ourselves, really. Because I feel like as humans, you know, we, we put so much power 
in these like titles and these like societal yeah. structures I feel like we're so afraid of taking ownership and just being like this is how I do it and not because anybody thinks it's okay but not because of because of how I do it you know what I mean like that yeah. I, I don't know but that's, I'm just this is what I'm trying out and I feel like not talking more about these things is the issue as well right like this is why we're having this conversation because we think it's, it's really important to come about and and discuss and we're not saying that we should you know that you should not care about what your ch child is eating or that you should just watch tv all day or that or that or that or that right whatever scenario it is that, that you're going through right now I'm just saying that we are all going to go through seasons where some areas are going to be shining out of 10 and some areas are going to be a three. There are going to be seasons where everything is going to be out of four. We've been sick for a year. Ah, 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 ah. We're moving. We're changing jobs. We just had a bait, whatever it is, right? Like life is going to throw curveballs. And I think the more we're open to embrace different styles of parenting for different seasons, different just mentalities and point of views, like yeah. just being a little bit more open-minded, a little bit more forgiving and more kind, just more like, and I think it goes hand in hand with a no judge, not judging another, another parent as well, because I feel like when you stop judging other people based on what you see them do for a second, you start giving yourself the freedom to, you know, to let go of the pendulum for more than a second and explore the other ways of letting yourself breathe as a parent, right? Like, it's okay if today the meal wasn't, you know, a five course meal. It's okay if, you know, you were in a bad mood in the morning because you were underslept. It's okay if they, you know, whatever, you didn't go do a crazy activity on the weekend and you just, you know, hung out all day. It's okay if they watched TV yeah. because you were pregnant and dying for it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly you know? Like sick all day and then like, it's sunny outside so you should go out with your toddler <laughs> come on yeah. there's life circumstance for everything I think that's also I think we like humans we just judge each other like you were saying with the 10 you see seven seconds of someone sharing something on the about their lives and you just instantly just judge and instantly in your head you go oh that you should be but that's what we do it's like why why are we here and then we sorry what I meant is like we do this to others so obviously we expect others to be doing the same to us and that's how we feel all guilty but that's we just need to let go of it we just don't understand what is happening in someone's life doesn't mean you get to judge you know like we all go for these and it the more like I feel like that has happened to me like the more I let go of my own you know in my head thoughts being like oh they should be doing this <laughs> like as if I know better like I don't and I started learning you know their circumstances there's like a lot more to stories than that you we see online there's because you know I started sharing as well and realized it's like oh <laughs> guess what 10 seconds doesn't like resume someone's life yeah and and it's just it's just interesting because like you start let go of that and then you start realizing that turns out people are not so bad we are just bad to each other because we don't understand and, and because we're we bad to ourselves to understand we assume and because we're bad to ourselves and we assume that that's yeah. what everybody's out to do and as well but the majority of people don't feel this way you know I think I think that's really a good point as well I feel like a lot of it is self-induced too like we sit here and we're like oh you know like I shouldn't and it's like why you saw it in a movie sometime or you heard somebody talk about it and like giving someone just said it online and uh, you right, felt you right. felt annoyed like about you it, need it to, triggered. exactly exactly and I, and I feel like giving ourselves the freedom to just come out and be like hey you know how great is it that this is how I do things and and celebrating that I did it this way and that today yeah. I get to do it this other way and just sort of like I think it's a little bit also like allowing ourselves to have fun with it I remember specifically one time with with my first where like she had already been with us for a while I don't know it could have been weeks or early months um because I was still we moved when she was two months so like we started traveling when she was two months so she was less than two months but imagine you have a baby for I don't know a month mm -hmm. and one day I'm sitting there and she starts smiling at me and I'm like oh my god and it just sort of like hit me that I could have fun with this baby up until then I had been so consumed with keeping this baby alive and so worried that I just I think I hadn't like I hadn't processed that like I get to have fun with this baby and now with with my new baby 
Like I make such an effort to stop and have fun with this baby because it's like, I know it's my last baby and, and I know that I can have fun with her, you know? And like, it's so nice to allow myself to be in this season. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to be a neglectful parent or that, you know, but I just know that playing with her is more important than giving her another bath when she's been here all day with me. You know what I mean? That spending yeah. time, her rolling around on the floor with her sister is more important than keeping her outfit clean or, you know, little things. And then that again, like, I that's another about thing. Before that's priorities as well like that's something that is a priority to you and doesn't mean it has to be the priority for everyone else like uh, I feel Correct. like we also get triggered by this like we see someone do something and be like oh I value this in my family la 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 and we feel triggered because we don't and somehow we feel like we have to do this whole thing the same way which nobody yeah, else does like say, we don't do it. I feel like when we say oh you know I'm uh this is what works for me it's almost like an invitation for fights it's like oh that's what works for you huh and it's like no 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 genuinely though i'm just saying it's what works for me genuinely like, <laughs> this works for me <laughs> it's like i'm sorry i was just trying to share my opinions i get that a lot i get that a lot in the in the travel community people get like you know it's like they come at me when i give an opinion about something that we do and it's like I, like i'm not telling you this is the only way I think for us in the academy that's one of the things that like has made us grow so fast because we've never been like this is the way to get your kid to do something in the flight or like we guarantee they're gonna sleep yeah. and it's like no man like don't be so realistic that's not a that's not what this is about whoever's telling you and selling you a course or telling you they have some magic trick to guarantee a fantastic beautiful perfect flight where the you come on like every single human is different you know but like we're yeah. always so honest about like let's just create expectations that are easy to manage and easy to reach and That's, actually yeah. give you the confidence to 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 make your own decisions and make plans according to your family and your needs because I think I think there's so much like joy in motherhood that comes after you start sort of allowing yourself to just do things the way that you want to do things because of your circumstances like I feel like yeah. we're always like if we, whenever modern parenting is a lot like you're faced with a situation and the first thing you do instead of think, how can I solve it is let me Google. And so before yeah. you even give yourself a chance to think about how you will creatively go about it, you start seeing other people's ideas and then you start judging your own ideas towards this and what is better or worse. But I feel like, like, you know, things are not just even black or white. There's a whole rainbow and then pastel colors and then shiny colors. And then, and then, and then like, there are so many variables to things, you know? Yeah, yeah it's true. There's no, it's no, nothing is linear in life and humans life, especially in families. Nothing, not, there's no one family that is the same, you know, like there's right. always something that will be different. And it's just, it's interesting to see that we are all judging I still don't know. Don't know who is this family that we took these ideas from and we put it in the paper and said, this is the family we live, need to live up to. Yeah, so who are they? Yeah, the yeah, standard that please, we created. Please, enlighten me. The funniest thing for me when the, when the standard queen shows up is when I get the voice from a parent that I'm supposed to be like, that I'm like, which part of me is this hypocrite? Like, like yeah. you know, like I sometimes get things that are very archaic. Like today I, I, I brushed Alaska's hair before going to school or whatever. And like, I, she has a, anyway, I cut her, her bangs and it's just, it's a disaster. But, um, <laughs> Got her hair and like, you know, it's, it's really, it's really short. She was moving a lot and like, it, it's like this, you know? Um, but actually at some point that I, I brushed it and then I brushed it to the side and it actually looked really nice. And even a, if you brush it this one specific way that lasts two seconds before she touches it, so mostly it looks like a mess, but whatever. And so when I saw it all evenly, I said a phrase in my mind that translates to, oh, look, what a nice, good girl or something like this in Spanish. Uh, una niña hecha derecha, you know, like it's straight and yeah. like, you know, like, I, I don't even know how to like, like straight, like that stands up straight. And that is complete sort of thing. It's what it's what it translates yeah. to, but it you know like a whole good girl sort of thing. I understand what, what it means, but I don't know how. To right, but I don't know how to translate it into English. Um, and like, <laughs> I just heard a voice, but this lady speaking in my mind is at least 150 years old because you know what does echi derecha, what does a proper girl mean? You know, like to me, <laughs> the person who like yeah. walks around barefoot all day and my kids barely wear shoes, like you know. And he was like. 
you know, and I feel like sometimes we we hold ourselves to standards of things that we've read or, or talked about or whatever, or in my case, probably that some book oh, that yeah, I read right, in right, Cuba yeah. from like, yeah, the 14th century was left by the Spaniards <laughs> when the, you know, like what? Like, who is this lady that like, you know, <laughs> thinks my, my daughter's hair is not proper because, you know, like, <laughs> but, but I'm like, sure like, like that's the thing like that's the thing like we get these yeah from somewhere there's something is proper that when like when you can cook a meal and the kitchen is tidy afterwards and everyone's like ah, yeah that's a job yeah. job well done yeah you can't You're wait till the morning today. Like, yeah it's like what <laughs> yeah exactly or like the other day the other day I was I was getting dressed up and Roger was like oh it's really cute and I was like oh, I don't know I don't, I don't feel like this is a very mom outfit and I was like what is a mom outfit? And then I was like, huh. like literally to myself. And I was like, let me define. Cause I was like, I, I, like I said it to myself, but I didn't even know what I meant. It was just something that was there. And I was like, it's not a mom outfit. What do I mean by that? Why didn't the outfit is not. And I dissected it. And I, I literally couldn't even come up with one thing because I ended up deciding that the outfit one way was very mom E like going out in the country, but the other way was like not mom enough. And so, because the shorts, you know, and then I was like, so completely confused, clearly didn't know what I meant, but I, if had I not questioned it, where had this thought of not a mom outfit had to, you know what I mean? Like, why was that even a thought that I had? You know what I'm saying? And so I feel like we don't ever think about how important it is to question some of these thoughts that we have. Like, I feel like we go in automatic, right? This is what I've always done. This is what I've always done. This is what I've always done. And it's like, Why? Why are we still doing that? Yeah. Like, how did it work for you last time you did this? Could could it go better okay. this time? <laughs> Can we try new things? You know, are you open to exploring? Please, <laughs> Please. let's learn. <laughs> you know, like the other day, I almost didn't wear a dress because I was like, oh, you know, it's just like I feel like just, and it's like what shows that you are four months postpartum. That's yeah, the issue. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah. And I swear to you, after I had that, I was like, oh, snap. Yes, this is a great dress. It's fantastic. Look how great I look for four months postpartum. But I swear exactly. to you that I almost didn't because I was like, oh. And I was like, what? Did, have a regular body at four months postpartum? I should show what it looks like to be four months postpartum in this type of body. In case there's other people with this type of body that feel like, oh, hey, me too. I can show that. Doesn't yeah, matter if you look exactly. worse or better, whatever that's defined to you right however you define that so but if other people and I think there's so much power in that in the fact that we can have these conversations and normalize all these things right whether it's about you know the way we look the way we feel the way we parent the way we marry the way we friendship the way we whatever right because I feel like for so long we're all following the the you know the little boxes that were invented like centuries ago yeah (laughs) yeah it, it is, it is. So, we, are, we are following some rules yeah. that got made somewhere by someone and uh, that no, do not reflect um, life that we live and yeah. we judge each other on it. Uh, but, oh, actually, the mum clothing thing. I did the same when I first, so like when I had Flynn, I changed my whole wardrobe because it wasn't mum enough. Did I change it to better? No. I started, like, I didn't know how to dress. Like, I just didn't know how to dress anymore because nothing was mom enough. I don't know. I don't know what was going on in my brain then. But... Well, it goes back to, because we do have an episode where we talk about discovering ourselves through, like, our own sense of fashion and stuff like that. But I think it also, you know, if, if you're in the season of motherhood where you're feeling conflicted or stopped or sort of like, you know, like something doesn't feel great, license to ask yourself if you're being the parent that you want to be you know what I mean according to what you actually believe license to question these concepts that are making you upset whether it's the way you look or or the way you know because I feel like for a lot of us the lack of permission right to question it because nobody else has because this is what it's supposed to be like because maybe that's the model that I'm following right I, I feel like that is what stops us because after you realize that nobody cares, that nobody's really watching, that nobody's counting, that nobody's going to come and be like, hey, you know, didn't you dress like this before? And now you change. It's like, yeah, I am. You know, because that's another thing. I'm actually in the process of throwing away all my clothes. And it's like, you know, oh, but I should keep it. Like, why? Why? Because 
why I can just get it again later when I I, I was gonna keep all this awesome like legging wear and stuff like that that I really like that it's like way small because eventually it'll fit again but like why why do I have to keep something with me for the next however many months waiting until my body goes back to normal when the body goes back to normal whenever it's ready I can just go buy it again and that'll be a fantastic opportunity to go shopping exactly you know I mean? and, and in also, the meantime it's, I can it's just the best way to do it honestly keeping it it's just annoying because it's keeping space in your wardrobe and stuff that you can buy things they fit you that yes. you can wear I yes. did that for three years I don't recommend it just, I know I like, but also I like, give it in away. my case it would just be collecting mold oh yes yeah you or I don't know you have a superpower for that so I mean no I am okay I am now I am this is not on point with this conversation but I'm gonna leave we're gonna close off this podcast podcast episode with a uh, beautiful information that you need to know I am determined I, de- I do declare that from now onwards I, I'm, I am going to have a um what is that called oh my god I forgot the name the wardrobe that it's like a like a pocket wardrobe like a when you only have some staple clothing and you just combined it all the time oh wait there's a name um, there's a name i know i just i, had I literally just before. read about it um, yes. oh uh, what's it called it's not pocket it's uh... a <laughs> it's gonna oh my god crazy. that's gonna be crazy now well anyway so you know what I'm talking about, right? When you have like a few staple clothing items that you could you alternate and combine within each other. So it's always looking cute and varied, but you only have a few pieces. You don't have to have many pieces so that you can travel light. Yeah. Did you find? Did you find? Capsule wardrobe. Capsule. capsule. Cap- yes, capsule, capsule wardrobe. So yes, a capsule wardrobe is the way to go. I am committing myself to it. Let's see how I do it. I am going... To just wear linen. I hate wearing oh, linen, yeah. but linen. I think you're, you're, you're very good at that, actually. You're very good at, you know, minimal uh, yes. mixing and matching and linen, especially linen stuff. I think that's, that's very you. Yes, I need to go back guys, to my linen. You guys are all welcome for all of this information. And also, you should <laughs> totally relevant to the podcast anyway thank you so much for listening um and sending us through our rant as you can tell it's like literally like having a conversation with us i wasn't gonna say tea but we don't even have tea anyway um come say hi on instagram at whoandthebombsout.pod don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next week don't forget if you have any ideas for topics you want us to cover drop them in the comments below or send us a dm on instagram at wholetthemomsout.pod peace